So today my friend RJ and myself, who's right behind me here, are down here exploring and we came across some items that don't look completely natural. And upon closer investigation, there is indeed some man-made structures here. So I'm going to keep you rolling the entire time and take you with me as we discover some ruins from the past. And I believe they are from the existence of a coal mine that was operating back here. So come along, let's check it out. I know it's hard to see with all the greenery, but there are things here hidden about. That right there is sections of a brick wall. Oh yeah, there is a type of telephone telegraph pole. Right in front of me here is a pretty big concrete base. And RJ, if you want to go up there just to show a, a sense of scale. That one actually has a, looks like a light arch fixture on it. Okay. See? Yeah. Can you stand on top of here so we can show them some sense of scale? <laughs> so yeah, you can see it's a decent block here with an opening in the middle and there would have been, or there was anchor bolts holding something on here. Next to that is another little base with a steel plate. And that one has some extruding anchor bolts coming out. So again, something was mounted here at one time. But what's even more interesting is as we're walking about, we're gonna see bricks, but also a foundation. But we're gonna to get to that in a second because there's something over here that really piqued my curiosity as well. And that is a pit here. And just from first glance, it does kind of resemble a mechanics pit, a repair pit for maybe mine cars. The reason I say that is because it's a concrete you know, uh, foundation, I guess you could say. And there's a big wooden beam and a second one that's collapsed here. And at one time there could have been rails going across so that a mine car could sit on top of it and they could you know, do any necess necessary repairs with the wheels or axles or anything like that. It could be com something completely different, but it does kind of resemble that. But there's also some notches in here too, some circular holes every so often. So I don't know how deep it goes. I don't want to jump in there just because it is full of debris and some rusty pieces, but it is here in proximity to everything else. But even on the edge here, there's some some uh, like sheet metal. But I'm gonna go over here now and we're gonna come back to that foundation. And if you guys do continue watching, I'm gonna make it worth your while, trust me, because there is something really neat I do wanna share with you near the end. So what we're looking at right here, which looks like just natural trees and forest, you can tell it's relatively new growth. There actually was a building here. Now we can confirm that because you see these straight lines? That is the foundation of the building. And you can almost kind of follow it. So it does have a concrete base and there was brick walls up on top of it. And as you come over here, there's some actually standing on bricks. There is more of it right there. And you can actually see the bricks, the bricks, the bricks laying there. I'm zooming for it, show you. Yeah, so that is remnants of a wall and it does keep going in that direction. So there was a oblong shaped building here at one time. Going to speculate what it could have been used for. I'm guessing maybe a, and this is just my guess, a type of machine shop or something, or uh, something that housed equipment because it is really close proximity to everything else here that Concrete square, the steel support there, the base, that pit over there. And again, as he spotted, there's some utility poles here. That foundation goes all the way to where I'm standing there. 
Okay, so this was actually inside the building, it appears. So RJ said that the foundation, he's actually standing on it right now. So, you know, if we follow it, it goes all the way there. This was inside of it. And then it goes up around it, so. It goes to the pole and then back that way. Okay. So it's probably 50 by 20, 30, something like that. He's guessing about 50 by 30 structure size. But I'm curious what could have been there. Maybe a type of motor or something or an engine. But as of right now, if you have any thoughts on what I've shown you, feel free to comment down below. But now I'm going to take you to something really interesting. Something I've shown before, but this is a new discovery for me. <clears throat> I'm going to kind of build up the suspense here. So one hint I already gave is that this is from the coal mining era where you know, these places were worked with underground mines. They had above ground structures for whether equipment for processing, anything like that. But the neat thing is that there's still signs of those old tunnels. So I'm gonna kind of do a little revealing shot here. I'm gonna bring you up to the trees, spin you around. That's a gorgeous shot right there. And we come down and look at that. That is a gated mine opening. Now I typically call them portals. Some people call them adits. Some people do even call them shafts, but shafts are vertical. They go up and down, but you could call it whatever you want. It is a tunnel of sorts. And this one is a decent size, but it's actually kind of lackluster the closer we get to it. Now, in just a moment, when RJ does get up here, I will have him stand in front of it and give you another size perspective. But one thing that is very evident, there's no airflow coming out. Typically, underground coal mines, especially here in Pennsylvania, are right around 50, 52 degrees year round. And there's other mines I've been in front of this time of year in the summer, and it's like air conditioning blowing out. It's super cold air. There is hardly any air coming out, which leads me to believe that it is collapsed. And I do have a flashlight, so we will take a peek inside there. There's a lot of loose rock fall. So let me uh, switch the camera here. There we go. So that is uh, all loose top, they call it. The top is top or back. And basically, the top or the back is the ceiling of the rock because when miners are bent over, their back is facing that. So they could call it the top or the back, but it is all loose material that is falling down. But there is a little bit of a clearing where it does appear to continue on. And uh, right there, that is looking into the depths of a tunnel of sorts. Right in front of it though, where the light's flashing, that is all loose material that fell down. So this is very unstable. Even if this gate wasn't here, I wouldn't attempt to go inside because any vibration or movement can dislodge any of this fractured rock and it's all cracked and fractured. It's, it's gonna fall, it's just a matter of time, not if, but when. But if you were to get past it, it does open up. Oh, and I just knocked the tree down. But yeah, that is um, mine workings. Now I know there are people that are very knowledgeable and even informative about, you know, what particular mines were here, when they closed, which companies operated them. I don't have that knowledge offhand. If I do find out anything, I will share it on the screen, but otherwise I just love discovering and sharing this stuff with you. But that is pretty awesome. So as we back away here, get you one more shot. I'm actually gonna place you guys on the ground and I will walk up to it and show you myself, with myself, how big it is. So give me one second here. So here we are, not very tall, but very wide.
So yeah, this is a pretty neat discovery. Now, in case you're not familiar with coal mines or how they do seal them up, typically it's the DEP, Department of Environmental Protection. They put these up, they're known as bat bars or bat gates. And what allows it to do is for bats specifically, but any type of small wildlife to be able to get in there and use it as a habitat. So most likely bats do habitate back there. Keeps people out and allows a home for bats. But this area is very rich. And what they mined here was anthracite coal mine. So anthracite is the better of the two types. There's bituminous and there's anthracite. So bituminous is softer, dirtier coal. And anthracite is the higher quality. It's harder, shinier, cleaner burning. And it's the same type of coal that was used you know, for steam locomotives, for heating, massive factories and industries, and even people's homes. And this is just signs of the past that what well, was once a very thriving business, coal mining, is now just ruins and remnants. There's even some big pieces of coal here, right there. You can see that. And even a Ford hubcap. But yes, I think this was worthy of a video to share with you guys. I know a lot of people are fascinated by coal mining as well as I am. And those of you who are not in coal country, well, you could at least see some things of uh, what it used to look like back in the day where coal mining is very prevalent. Also down in Virginia, you could find coal mining as well, but other parts of the country will find um, mining for ore, whether it be gold, copper, silver, anything of the sorts. So anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this little adventure. If you do have any information you, you want to share or questions you want to ask, feel free to do so. And if you want to see more adventures and things related to what we're doing today, make sure to check the playlist down below. Otherwise, we're going to continue exploring and you never know what we'll find, but make sure to get out and to explore your world. Thanks for watching, everyone. And until next time, I'll see you real soon in the next video.